Next, we got Johnny. Johnny, you're up, man. Floor is yours. Oh, well, wow. after following those two, I'll, I'll try to make this quick. Right? Make it quick. <laughs> <laughs> those were great. That was awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what I want to talk about today is pen, pencil, and paintbrush. When we're uh, when we're light painting and stuff like that, we see all the time uh, flashlight reviews and people ask, you know, what flashlight do I need and so forth and so forth. And what I've found is really it's not what flashlight I need, it's how flashlights were made. Flashlights were not designed like the pen was. If I told you to take a pen and draw a circle on a piece of paper, most of us could do that without any problems and never give a thought to the pen itself because we're trained from the time we're little with crayons and stuff like that to utilize that tool. But the flashlight, we were basically taught to turn on and you know, it's more of an extension of our eyes than a tool used for our hands. And when we're trying to light paint and activate the switch and move around, the flashlight can actually be a bit of a problem because it wasn't designed to be activated on and off and swung as, you know, as a, as a drawing tool. And so what I want to do is cover a couple of things today. I got my dog in the background stirred up for some reason. But anyway, um, a quick hey, thing I, that you can do, huh? I was going to say, I, w I wish we would have recorded. Uh, don't mean to cut you off there, but when we were recording uh, yesterday, for everybody that don't know, um, we had the Grinch. His family kept putting the mask, the Grinch mask on, and they would just walk by. <laughs> it was they kept doing it back and forth, but it was hilarious. We should have. I should. I wish um, we caught a recording of that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, about how to control the flashlight. You know, a lot of times when I'm doing strobes, what happens is as as I activate the button. It wants to push the flashlight, regardless of what position I'm working from. You know, and I've had this problem with every flashlight that I've owned. My uh, go-to flashlight, let's see here, let me pull it up right quick, is the Sunfire MX-65, which is a much bigger flashlight than this Coast G26. These are my two. This is my uh, studio light. And then my outside work light would be this one right here. Okay, they make little grips for them, but it really just doesn't stop it from sliding around on me. So what I've done is I've printed these little rings that'll slide over top of it that I can glue in place and make stops out of. Now this one's not glued in, but I have one here that's glued in, All right? And what that stop does, it allows it so I don't have to worry about the grip and sliding because the pressure between my finger and the stop. So no matter which way I turn the light, all I need to do is stop it from moving. And it makes it really easy to activate. So like if I wanted to do pop strobes manual, no problem because the light itself's not going to move. Now my rings are 3D prints, but something you can do to make your own is use a rubber band. Take a rubber band, cut it. Oops. Take your flashlight, line it up on it, and start rolling it around like so. And then you take some electrical tape, let's see, place it over top of it. And the nice thing about electrical tape is it stretches and will mold itself around. So about that quick, you've got to stop very similar to mine just with a rubber band and a piece of tape. And now the flashlight don't want to move around on you. No matter which hand style you're using, because you get limited. Like I said, if you're doing strobes, this little G26 is great for doing manual strobes. But that's one little trick that you can use. You can build up more uh, rubber bands on it if you want to. You can just use the basic rubber band and twist it around it. It's not as pretty looking, but it does something very similar. Okay. Now, if you don't have any problem with grip, my hands are old and beat up. Now, I've mentioned this before in other episodes. I've talked about friction tape. 
Sometimes you don't need to stop. All you need is some friction. This is the electrical tape. This is the friction tape. They look very similar to each other, but the friction tape's made out of cloth. So just simply by taking the tape, wrapping it around the light, because the flashlights are plastic or aluminum, they don't, uh, there's not much friction involved. Where just that little bit of tape will do the same function if you've got good dexterity in your hands. And uh, just like your clothes, if you go outside in the rain, how your clothes try to stick to you, if you need a little more friction, you can take your uh, bottle of water, put it in your hand, and just dampen the cloth and tighten it up. And now you have a lot more control. Because whenever I'm waving, you know, especially if I'm doing two lights at once, I, I want to be able to work the lights without giving any thought to how I'm having to hold or activate the button and having the extra stops gives you control, like I said, in a variety of different angles. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, that's good, man. Anyway, just food for thought, stuff like that. Uh, you can look up online if you like the, uh, the rubber ring stops. You can go to like a tractor supply. A lot of their, uh, a lot of their equipment use very large rubber O-rings. So all you got to do is measure the diameter of your flashlight and go look through their O-ring drawer, put an O-ring on it and super glue it in place. That makes a good permanent stop. But anything you can do to take the uh, movement out of your light gives you a lot more control. You know, like I said, I mean, man, automatic strobes and stuff like that are good, but you're at the mercy of the timing of the strobe. You know, if it's, if it's a preset strobe, some of them have variable speeds, but if you're doing, I, I like doing a lot of things manual. Everything I do, I want to be manual. And here I can pop it where I want it, when I want it. And I don't have to worry about losing control of my flashlight at all. I mean, there's no real grip in using that at all. It's just being stopped by my thumb. Even though I don't have a hold on it, I have complete control of the operation of the flashlight. You know, where flashlights were designed to be handheld, but they weren't designed as a hand tool. You know, I mean, I've heard and been and told my son many times, hold that light still, because I'd let him have it. It's easier to free your hands up if you hang it up. So it wasn't really designed as a hand-operated tool. And as light painters, we're trying to use it as such. And little, little modifications like that can improve the amount of control. If you're not having to think about the operation, then you can concentrate more on your project. That was budget. I would just like to, I'd like to add to that real quick. Just uh, everybody looking at this, you might not think it makes that big a deal, but it really does help a lot. Johnny turned me on to this and hooked me up with a special little setup, and it it makes a huge difference. That I have two lights sitting next to each other. I'm always grabbing the one that has the little stopper on it so just try it out you probably get way more use out of it than you think you might and then do stuff that's temporary like i said like the rubber band deal um the the thing about doing electrical tape and like i said electrical tape will actually stretch so when you do like the rubber band it'll mold around and then uh after some use because it stretches it can flex a little bit but you can get something like epoxy. Once you get it taped around in the way you want, you can take a clear epoxy and paint brush that over top of what you've done and it'll crystallize and become hard, become a permanent part. But as you've noticed, like on the G26, I have a very small stop on it where with the bigger flashlight, I've got actually a bigger knob. And the reason I did is because the way this light feels in my hand, this feels like I'm holding a golf ball. It's just as natural as, you know, like if I was going to throw it, that would, you know, it's just like it's holding a golf ball in my hand. So really all I'm having to do is squeeze my fist. The, the pinky wasn't designed to really operate coordinated like this. We don't train it to. So like, because it's got to stop, I'm really the, the way my arm feels is I'm just making a fist. I'm not actually trying to flex that finger. And again, I'm not having to hold the light very tight. I can concentrate more on the activation and not holding on to the flashlight because there's no effort at all 
and keeping this flashlight right where I want it. So if I want to do, you know, like I said, if I'm doing things, especially in pairs, you know, where I can, I can activate the lights at will, whether I'm doing momentary or if I'm doing click and oh, click on, click off. All right. That's uh, good, man. That's that's great there. I'm going to have to try that for sure. Um, one thing I like, I think the G26 has the, the fastest response at any flashlight I've ever touched. So the, to have that control of having something there, I think I think it becomes even quicker. And like with me, I like to do, you know, uh, uh, symmetry flares and just be symmetrical with them. So just by utilizing that with two G26s, I can just, I can see all kinds of possibilities. So that's, uh, that's great right there. Right. And another quick tip. Now, this would require a little bit of skill uh, in tool operation. If you'll notice on the G26, on all these new tactical flashlights, they've got this finger guard or the switch guard up here. I actually like to grind mine off so that my switch is exposed. Huh. I mean, this was designed to protect. Right. And most, of, most of the tacticals are that way. But what that does, it allows me to roll my thumb over the switch. I don't have to get my thumb down in that hole to activate it. So between the stop and being able to push from any direction, I have an amazing amount of control and it feels just as natural as a pen, a pencil, or a paintbrush would. So now when I'm actually light writing, you know, I, I, it stops when I want it to, you know, a lot of times what I'd had a problem with, with a lot of my flashlights was, like I said, them walking. So when I started, I had this much leverage to control the light, but by the time I was done, I had the head of the light wobbling around and I had to reposition, you know? So anymore, when I look for a flashlight, I don't look, I don't have to do a lot of search and I want it to do two things. Number one, it has to, has to, has to fit in the universal connector comfortably and I want to be able to turn it on and turn it off with a single switch if it'll meet those two criteria with some minor modification I can make it fit my hand comfortably that's just trial and error some people a little extra grips all they need some may want a contour you can take the tape start it out doing single rolls and then one spot build it up a little bit and then fall off so it's all stuff you can do just at home you know Without the 3D printer, I like the 3D printer because I've kind of got addicted to it. <laughs> but before that, I had to do a lot of it with just homemade stuff. And there's stuff around the house you can think of, like I said, tape. Tape does all kinds of miracles. Tape and epoxy. Anyway, that's what I've got for today. And that's great stuff. Does Does anybody have any questions for Johnny or uh, want to ask him anything about that? All uh, right, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Johnny likes to drop little Easter eggs. So someone was asking, you know, are those new uh, tools, the little plexis that you were messing around with? So that's a maybe. So you see the My smile tools? on his face, so he loves it. <laughs> yeah. My little tool. Exactly. And then uh, Ben, ben wanted to... Uh, he said, I'd love to see your case set up behind you. Oh. Oh, there's another Easter egg uh, Johnny wanted to drop. <laughs> yeah, that one, this here. I think Ron already even asked you about this. Yeah, this, this thing is so yeah, And I kind of jumped past him. <laughs> right. No, this is all this is is a piece of acrylic with some three quarter fittings. I drilled holes in it and glued some three quarter fittings because all the Universal connector stuff is based on the three quarter coupler. So I'm able to just carry everything nice and neatly <laughs> packed away. And I have a few custom variations. Some are practical, some not so much. And a lot of it is just tool time. The inside of it oh, is really just blades, flashlights, ouch, and connectors. <laughs> and i'm just saying just let me go on record here that none of this is necessarily happening but this is all johnny's crazy stuff just so everybody knows <laughs> right right yeah 
I mean, I've been doing this crazy stuff long before I got associated with, you know, with Paige. And since then, we've just started working together. And it's been a very entertaining and educational trip trying to meet his standards with some of the crazy stuff that I can come up with. So. <laughs> Well, good yeah, stuff, well, John. Man. Thank, thank you, thank you uh, again for sharing that with us. That was that was great. All right. So, if no one has any other questions, we're gonna move on. I'm gonna screen share here. All right. Everybody, see my screen? All right. Actually, before I screen share, let me let me tell you this. So. Um, remember we did the banner contest in, in the light painting brushes group page, um, wanted you guys to just the last 30 days, just submit to your best image. Um, give us a little description about it and everything. And so me, Jason and Johnny were going through everything, um, last night, just trying to, to pick, pick an image to use as the banner. Um, and Jason, thanks to him, uh, we actually have three winners, so we don't just have one, um, those are $50 gift cards to uh, light painting brushes. So thank you, number one, Jason, appreciate that. And uh, we'll share who those winners are. So we've got, move this over, Christina Marie. So there's that one. This is uh, the winner number one. Um, I'll, send, I'll send you and the others um, um, the gift card and uh, so you guys can get your uh, use at lightpaintingbrushes.com. So thank you, Christina Marie. And next we have Andrew Richardson. So this this is really cool. Uh, we love the fog and the, the flare behind the trees and just the symmetry here. So um, we'll go ahead and get you that gift card too as well. And last but not least, we have Christina Lux. I believe, I believe she's in Germany, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, so we, I don't know if any of you, any of you three are here with us this evening, but, um, I'll go ahead and get your gift card to you. So thank you so much for participating and, uh, sharing your work and giving us a brief description. So, um, thank you. So we'll get it. We'll get a gift card to you soon. Um, next up we have, I don't know why I stopped screen sharing there. Hold on one second. We've got... For shout outs. So let's do some shout outs. Um, this one here, you know what I, I saw and I even wrote in the description here. I was watching that Netflix show, show the uh our universe. I don't know if any of you have seen that, but there's a part in that in that documentary where um Mars is being blown away, its atmosphere is just being dissipated and torn apart by the sun um because it didn't have a you know the atmosphere. Um but this for whatever reason made me think about that. And uh, I loved it. it. I'm intrigued by it. So it just, it got my attention and wanted to shout, shout out this person for this image here. So it's, it's fantastic. Um, next we have Ryan, Ryan O'Connell. Um, the stuff he's been doing with the sheet stuff is just awesome. Awesome. And I love the use of the glitter stick there. Um, gives that galaxy effect. Uh, really a cool image. Um, you know, as along with the, the series that he's been doing with this stuff is just so cool. Um, so keep it up, man. Really appreciate you sharing with us. Uh, Stefan Knight, uh, this this was cool. The, the symmetry of that glitter stick in the back, man, just pulled me right to it. Uh, great shot. Appreciate you. And then here's that tree, that Dimitri, man, that this tree, man, just uh, every time I see it, makes me want to smile. And I'm just like, it's perfect. It's so good, man. It's just the symmetry and everything. Uh, I love it, man. Keep uh, keep doing what you're doing. Keep sharing with us. We we appreciate seeing your work. Uh, again, Christina Marie. This this whole series, where knowing her for so long and where it's come from, where, when she started doing this this particular type of technique to where it's come now, it's beautiful. And this color scheme right there, that per that kind of aurora i call it an aurora look but man it's just so gorgeous um so i wanted to shout you out uh this was really cool uh, i'd like to know more about it just the the i don't know if it's a after effect photoshop with the 3d element but it's it's super cool with the with the fiber there um love that 
Daniel, he's always doing some, he just loves that, that serpent blade, man. He just, the stuff that he, uh, he, he does with it and creates is, is always appreciative. So, um, thanks for sharing with us. Uh, this was really neat. Just the nice, just, the the moodiness of this image just is awesome. Um, so thank you so much for sharing it. Uh, it says white color hoods, light whip, nine inch white fiber optic. Um, just a cool image. Thanks for sharing. This, I love the color, just with the mask and everything. Um, really grabs, it's really grabbing as far as just with the color combination there. And you know, with light painting, color is such a huge part and he's such a huge element. Um, so this is extremely pleasing on the eyes and really cool, really cool light painting. And I, I'm always, I'm always, uh, I love when I, when I see something new. Um, you know, the, the, yes, inside the orb, it's, it's, you know, we, we see that before, but this outside stuff with the glitter stick is so awesome. Um, I love seeing new elements, the LP light painting. Um, so thank, thank you so much and uh, appreciate you sharing with us all the time. So that is, let me stop sharing here. That's all I got. So I just want to, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here this evening and, um, you know, and from my family to your family, Merry Christmas. Um, I hope you all have a very blessed and happy Christmas and happy new year. Um, we'll definitely be back in January for another live. Um, and thank you all so much again for just sharing with us in the group, being a part of the community and just building the relationships that we do and all the, the amazing people that I get to meet and talk with. And so thank you all so much. I really appreciate you. And uh, that's it. Dimitri, thank you again, man. Thank you to our guest, Michelle. Thank you, Johnny, Jason. Um, and to those, uh, the ones that won the banner contest, I'll, uh, I'll get your, uh, your gift, gift card to you as soon as I can. Um, probably when I'm done with this live tonight, I'll shoot you a message uh, just so you have that information. So thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you. We love to see faces. We love seeing you guys. So this is awesome. Thank you. Bye from thank Germany. Thank you. Bye, thank you. See you, boys. See you, Dimitri. Thank you, Dimitri. Thank you.